Okay, this screencast is dedicated to uh, essential knowledge 3E2, which is essentially the nervous system uh, for AP biology. And the reason this is so important is in previous sections we've covered how um, organisms communicate with one another and how organisms take in information about their environment and respond accordingly. Well, essentially the nervous system is the primary means by which an organism takes in that information, um, transduces it throughout the, uh, the organism, communicating with other uh, physio physiological systems uh, and uh, eventually causing some sort of uh, behavior or movement. Now, uh, Organisms have various complexity, obviously, and the nervous system is, is part of that complexity. If you started a simple organism like a hydra, uh, you'll have a primitive immune system, a series of uh, nerve networks, basically. Um, but as you progress in complexity in organisms, the nervous systems become more complex as well. Uh, but essentially at the heart of all of these immune systems, the neuron is the basic unit of function. So it's neurons that are taking in information. Uh, you have sense, sense organs, organs, organs that take in information, communicate it to neurons, and neuron will communicate to neuron, and eventually a neuron will, will communicate with either uh, a gland or a muscle and, and convey that message. But keep in mind the neuron is the basic uh, unit of function. Uh, in, in taking information from the environment and passing it along uh, to, to create some meaningful behavior. Here is a neuron. There are several types of neurons right here. I'm showing you a, uh, a motor neuron, so it's synapsing on muscle uh, here. But the, the basic, what you need to know for AP biology is, is, is somewhat basic and, and similar for the neuron. So uh, let's just describe this um, sort of generically. Uh, so neurons are cells, they're nervous tissue uh, cells. Uh, and so like all cells, um, almost all cells, uh, you need a, a portion of the cell to house your, your organelles and your genetic information. Uh, and so right here you see this uh, cell body. Um, you see the cell body of this neuron. Okay, so that's uh, position right here. These uh, small extensions off the cell body here, here, sort of branching uh, extensions from the cell body uh, are called dendrites. Dendrites basically take in information from other neurons. So a neuron would be uh, synapsing here uh, and sending that information to uh, this neuron right here. So you'd have connections here and information be being passed from uh, a neuron up here to this neuron uh, through the dendrites. Uh, we'll talk in a minute about what an action potential is and how that basically conveys information in the nervous system, but suffice to say for now uh, that the message that the neuron is trying to communicate will be passed here along the axon, which is the uh, uh, long extension from the cell body for a neuron. And eventually that axon is going to uh, terminate at the end. So very similar to the dendrites, you'll have these um, postsynaptic, or you'll have these synaptic terminals basically uh, at the end of the, the neuron here. Uh, in this case, we're synapsing on muscle, uh, but you can also synapse on other neurons uh, communicating information. How does that work? Well, this, for starters, um, the message is passed along the axon like so. Uh, but for a lot of cells uh, in the nervous system, you're going to see uh, these myelin sheaths here. Okay, so this uh, structure that's insulating the neuron here is called a myelin sheath, and it's produced by Schwann cells. So this is a, a cell that surrounds uh, the axon of a neuron, produces a myelin sheath. And the importance of that is that it acts as an insulator. So essentially what it does is it speeds up uh, the action potential, the communication pa passing down the uh, length of the axon. Uh, it's going to speed it up because what happens here is the action potential is going to jump, jump from node to node here. So it's going to jump from here to here and from here to here. The spaces that are not insulated uh, by myelin sheath uh, are called... This 
spaces that are not insulated are called uh, the nodes of Ron VA. So essentially action potentials will jump from uh, node to node to node and that speeds up um, conduction of the action potential um, along the axon. Speaking of action potentials, what you need to know, the basics of what you need to know for the AP Biology test. Um, essentially, the, a neuron has uh, what's called a resting state. So here, this neuron uh, ha is re at rest. So its resting potential is around uh, minus 70 millivolts. Okay, uh, So that is the... Um, potential of the of the neuron so at rest you see minus 70 and essentially what that means is there's a polarity um, a difference in charges inside the uh, neuron so inside you'll see uh, a measurement that's negative uh, compared to the outside which uh, measures relatively positive uh, okay so that's the resting potential that's the uh, polarity associated with uh, a neuron that is uh, is at rest okay and so what happens here is as an action potential is occurring uh, going from here to here the uh, voltage of that cell is going to increase well why does the voltage increase well you're gonna see positively charged ions in this case sodium uh, rushing into the cell okay so through these voltage gated ion channels you'll see uh, sodium pass in and we talked about uh, you know shape changes associated with um, um, basically uh, protein channels uh, and what you can see here is that uh, as the as the neuron becomes charged in the synapses um, or the action potentials passed along the length of the axon you're going to see these uh, voltage gated channels open up and allow potassium in that changes the uh, voltage of the cell to around plus 40 um, okay so this is essentially an action potential occurring after the action potential is passed of a certain part of the neuron uh, you need to return to a resting state okay so uh, basically this change in polarity we call that a, a depolarization so it's no longer polarized um, at, at minus 70 now it's uh, it goes up to plus 40 because of the sodium rushing in uh, it's depolarized we need to repolarize so how do you repolarize well in order to get back to that negative there has to be a change in these uh, in, in the concentration the location of the ions okay the ion uh, that changes in this instance isn't sodium this time. Instead, these pink uh, potassiums are going to open up using the uh, potassium channel to now exit the inside of the neuron, once again restoring that uh, resting action potential. So you're repolarizing the cell back to a, to a resting state. And if you look at it a different way here, uh, you see that there is a threshold associated with an action potential so here at resting potential around minus 70 uh, as sodium rushes in you start to uh, become more positive and right around minus 40 millivolts um, that's where you see uh, an action potential basically take place um, this is the threshold so once you get past this minus 40 you have an action potential and it usually goes um, upwards towards uh, plus 40 so that's your depolarization state and once again you repolarize with uh, potassium moving to the outside and so at the repolarization event you're going to go back towards your negative state because potassium is leaving the cell okay so it's um, an action potential is basically uh, a change in your charge um, as voltage is basically changing throughout the cell that's that's being uh, that, that's uh, information being passed along the action uh, along the neuron okay so an action potential is information um, well how do you how do you convey intensity then if basically you have a threshold and an action potential either happens or doesn't happen the intensity uh, of a stimulus 
being passed along an, uh, uh, the axon of a neuron is basically based on, on the, uh, the frequency of action potential. So for a given Hertz rate, a given frequency of something happening, something that's rather intense would occur uh, frequently and something that's not as intense, the, uh, the uh, action potentials would cut, come at a much more slow rate. Okay, so that's basically an action potential. You need to understand that. There's a lot of biology in there with channels opening, channels closing. This is a, uh, a change in polarity. Um, it's, a, it's an electrical message being sent along the length of a neuron through the axon. What happens when you get to the end uh, of, uh, of an axon, though, um, here you see uh, basically one cell sending information and that information coming to the end of an axon and, and reaching these synaptic terminals okay so this is a blown up picture of a synaptic terminal uh, the synaptic terminals terminal is going to pass a message to this the dendrites of this uh, other neuron downstream of that okay so we're going to com communicate information here up to this point the information has been electrical uh, you know it's been based on potential uh, of the membrane once you get to the synaptic terminal, the information, uh, the message is going to be converted into a chemical message, okay? So there are vesicles here um, in the end of, of, the, of this, the, the synaptic terminal, essentially. Uh, and these, these vesicles are filled with neurotransmitters. Now these neurotransmitters are going to be released, exocytosed, into this uh, synaptic cleft, okay? So neurons don't actually touch. Uh, they come very close to touching, but they don't actually touch. Here the message becomes chemical. Neurotransmitters are dumped into that synaptic cleft, and uh, they eventually interact with and pass the message along to the next neuron by interacting with um, receptors on uh, that surface. So the neuron acts as the uh, signal. It's a ligand. It binds the channel, changing its shape and allowing things to happen. So here you see... Uh, with the shape change, now uh, this channel is open and ions can pass through. Uh, essentially what happens when that message is passed along, the neurotransmitter is broken down um, and you essentially wipe the synaptic cleft free of neurotransmitter. Okay, and you're basically starting over and waiting for the next message. Uh, well, we've, we've actually noticed uh, pharmacologically that there are some ways to alter events at the synapse. Uh, and, and there are a lot of interesting drugs out there. I'll give you a very brief example uh, involving something in the first case with uh, the neurotransmitter serotonin. Uh, we've all heard of uh, depression. Depression, scientists have found, is due to um, you know failure for serotonin-related messages uh, being passed from neuron to neuron. So what scientists and, and, and chemists have done is they've developed a means uh, of strengthening the communication between neurons. So if depression is due to a, a decrease in interaction and in, in information sharing between neurons, uh, they've developed drugs that help that message be passed from neuron to neuron. And uh, the drug Prozac is an excellent example of that. Prozac is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So instead of it being wiped away and broken down, uh, and being reabsorbed back into the presynaptic neuron. Instead, what happens is Prozac binds to those uh, receptors, um, shown here in green, uh, and prevents them from being taken back up by the neuron. Because they're existing in the cleft a little bit longer, you have a better likelihood of them binding with uh, their receptors on the postsynaptic uh, neuron and communicating that information. And, and, and studies have shown that that firing um, acts, uh, firing neuron and enhanced communication with the, the postsynaptic neuron leads to a better mood, a better state. Another interesting example uh, are you know drugs of abuse, heroin and, and morphine. Well morphine was actually developed to, to, you know, for, for medicine, medicinal purposes. but your body actually makes um, endorphins, that interact with endorphin receptors at the surface of a cell, and, and, and this complex essentially acts to uh, dull pain responses. Well, you can uh, use drugs that uh, mimic 
uh, natural endorphins like morphine and, and heroin, heroin. They're essentially derivatives of that. They act with the endorphin receptors and give the same response. Uh, unfortunately, if you abuse them, uh, you know the, the the neurons become desensitized, and you have to take more and more of the morphine or the or the heroin to to feel the same effects, and and you essentially start to outcompete your natural uh, endorphins. So, uh, a lot of pharmacology, a lot of drug discovery is based on mimicking the actual ligands that work at um, cell surface receptors, um, like the natural ligand endorphin that interacts with the endorphin receptor that that mediates um, breakdown and blocking of pain. Um, so people have invented drugs to do that pharmacologically and, and some of them have been created like heroin and are drugs of abuse. So anyway, I hope that helps with a basic uh, understanding of neuroscience. Well, a very, very basic understanding of neuroscience, but at least how the neuron functions, what its structure is and the action potentials and, and how they uh, turn into a chemical response as neurotransmitters cross the synaptic cleft.